Shalom, shalom, shalom. Most high in Christ, bless. Most high in Christ, bless. This is 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Amaziah. Today I have with me... Officer Yafin. I have Officer Yafin with me today. All right, so the topic today, brothers and sisters, the topic today, we're going to smash another Christian misconception of the Bible, okay? We're going to talk about when Christ said, love your enemies, what is it really talking about? It's talking about loving everybody on the earth that hates your guts, that, that oppresses you. We're going to find out today what does it mean. Give me that script, Matthews 5 and 44. Let's find out. We're going to Matthews chapter 5, verse 44. Let's see what Christ said. The book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So this is Jesus now, who you think is sweet and cuddly. He said, love your enemies, love them, do good to them that curse you, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Okay, keep reading. That ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven. So by doing that, that shows you are the children of your father which is in heaven. Okay, go ahead. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. Uh-huh. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Uh-huh. For if ye love them which love you. If you only love the people that love you. What reward have ye? What reward you got? Go ahead. Do not even the publicans the same? Uh-huh. And if ye salute your brethren only, what do you more than I'm sorry, what do you more than than others? Uh-huh. Do not even the publicans so? So it's saying Christ is saying you act like the publicans. You only love those that love yourself. So, we read about a, a like an we read about an enemy right here that Christ said to love. Let's find out what different types of enemies there are according to the Bible. Give me Exodus 23. We were going to read verse 4 and verse 5. The book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 4. If thou meet thine enemy's ox. Uh-oh. We're talking about an enemy now. Christ said, uh, Moses said, if, if you meet your enemy's ox, your enemy's possession. Read. Or his ass uh -huh. going astray. And is going astray. Thou shalt surely bring it back to him Your again. Your job is to bring it back to that enemy. Okay, keep reading. If thou see the ass of him that hateth thee. If you see the ass of him that hates your guts. Lying under his burden. Uh-huh. And would is forbear to help and him. And you don't help, you turn a blind eye to that, to that enemy. Thou shalt surely help with him. No, you. the, the scripture says you are commanded to help that enemy particular enemy hold that let's go to deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 1 let's see if this is in any other part of the bible about helping uh, uh helping someone who's got the ass under their, bur their burden and so forth give me that deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 1 thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep going astray this sounds very familiar we just read it in Exodus 23 and 4, but now is saying that enemy in Exodus 23, verse 4, is your brother, brothers and sisters. It's your brother. Read that again. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray uh -huh. and hide thyself from them. And hide yourself from them. Thou shalt in any case bring them again unto thy brother. Unto who? Unto thy brother. Read. And if thy brother be not nigh unto thee, or if thou know him not, uh -huh. if you don't, even if you don't know that's that's your brother, but he's from your nation. Go ahead. Then thou shalt bring it unto thine own house. You you bring it to your house because you don't know who who is who, which uh, brother it is. Go ahead. And it shall be with thee. It's gonna stay with you until thy brother seek after it. Then. When that particular brother comes to look for it and you find out that he's looking for it, oh, I got your ass right here. I got your possession right here. It was going astray. Here, here you go. Go ahead. 
until thy brother seek after it, and thou shalt restore it to him again. Read. In like manner shalt thou do with his ass, uh -huh. and so shalt thou do with his raiment, and with all lost thing of thy brothers. Of who? Of thy brothers. Of your brothers. Go ahead. Which he hath lost, uh -huh. and thou hast found, shalt thou do likewise. Thou mayest not hide thyself. Read. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ass or his ox fall down by the way and hide thyself from them. Uh -huh. Thou shalt surely help him to lift them up again. So that enemy in Exodus 23 verse 4 and 5 is your brother. Now go back to Exodus 23. So now we got one type of enemy. One type of enemy that is really... From your nation. That's really your brother. Okay. Now let's get the other type of enemy in, in the same, same chapter, Exodus 23. Give me verse 20. We're going to read 20 through 23. Exodus chapter 23, verse 20. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way uh -huh. and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. It's talking about Christ. Go ahead. Beware of him. Beware of this angel. And obey his voice. Uh -huh. Provoke him not. Uh -huh. For he will not pardon your transgressions. He's not going to pardon your sins. Go ahead. For my name is in him. Uh -huh. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice. If you do obey this, this uh, angel's voice. And do all that I speak. Uh -huh. Then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies. Wait a minute. Christ, the, uh, the scripture says, I'm going to be an enemy to your enemy. Is this talking about your brother? Let's find out. Read. I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Let's see what the next verse says, who the enemy is. Verse Read. 23, for mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee into the Amorites. The Amorites, that's not an Israel, that's an Amorite, that's a, that's a Hamite. Read. And the Hittites. Ham. And the Perizzites. Uh -huh. and other, the, other nations, read. And the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And I will cut them off. So those are a different type of enemy now. That's the enemies of the other nations, brothers and sisters. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Let's see about some more about these, these uh, enemies. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again uh -huh. with ships. Sla slavery again by ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way whereof I spake unto you. Thou shalt see it no more again. You're not going to see your homeland no more, brothers and sisters. And there, and there, ye shall be sold. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Is that talk about your your soul? Is Christ said? Is is uh, is God saying we're going to be sold to our own brothers? No, we're sold to the other nations. Those are the enemies right there. Okay, read. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. Slave man, slave woman. And no man shall buy you. No man is going to be able to redeem you out of the curses in Deuteronomy 28. Now, jump up to verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore... Shalt thou serve thine enemies? There it goes again, those enemies. Go ahead. Which the Lord shall send against thee uh -huh. in hunger. In hunger. And in thirst. Uh -huh. And in nakedness. Uh -huh. And in want of all things. Whatever you want, you got to go to your enemy for it now. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron. Your enemy is going to put a yoke of iron on your neck. Not your brother that you got a problem with, but the, the real enemy of, your, of the other nations. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Psalms 83. We're going to read 1 through 8 real quick. We only got 15 minutes. Let's get it popping. Psalms 83, 1. Psalms chapter 83, verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Now remember, this is a prayer. Go ahead. Hold not thy peace. This is a song, matter of fact. Go ahead. And be not still, O God. Read. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. Your enemies, God, are making a tumult. They're right, raising up. Read. And they that hate thee. They that hate you, those enemies, have lift up the head. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Read. And consulted against thy hidden ones. They've consulted against the hidden ones. The children of Israel, we're the hidden ones. We're hidden to know, uh, we're hidden from our nationality, our culture, our language, our minds, our right minds. Read. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Read. For they have consulted together with one consent 
They are confederate against thee. They're against you, God. Let's see the enemies that are against God. Read. The tabernacles of Edom. So-called white man. And the Ishmaelites. So-called Arab. Of Moab. The Chinese. And the Hagarines. Ham. Gabal. Ham. And Ammon. Japanese. And Amalek. And Amalek. These are where we're reading is the enemies of God, the fake Jew. Go ahead. The Philistines uh -huh. with the inhabitants of Tyre. Read. Asor also is joined with them. Uh -huh. They have hope in the children of Lot. The children of Lot. So what did we just read? We just read a list of enemies of God of the other nations, brothers and sisters. Now, give me 1 Samuel 18, 29. So now we read a couple of scriptures. We went to Deuteronomy 28, 68, verse 48. We went to Psalms 83 about the other nations being our enemies. Okay. Now, give me that. 1 Samuel 18. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 29. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David. Saul was afraid of David at this point, right? Saul was an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. David was an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. They're brothers. They're from the same nation. Let's see how David and the Spirit of the Lord dealt with Saul. Read it again. And Saul yet I'm sorry. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David. Saul was yet the more afraid of David. And Saul became David's enemy continually. And Saul became David's enemy. Even though they were brothers, they were enemies. They had an ought with each other. Saul was trying to kill David. Did David, when he had the opportunity to kill Saul, did he do it? No. He still showed love to King David. Give me Micah 2 and 8. Let's go to Micah chapter 2, verse 8. Let's see what that says now. Let's see what the Bible got to say about all these enemies. The book of Micah chapter 2, verse 8. Even of late. Even of late. My people is risen up as an enemy. Y'all see that, brothers and sisters? Our people have become enemies to God and to each other. We hate each other. We rob each other. We steal from each other. We try to sleep with each other's woman. Then put it on Facebook or social media. Yeah, I had your girl. All kinds of evilness we do to each other. We sell drugs to We do all kinds of, all manners of evil to each other. Primarily. Read it again. Even of late, my people has risen up as an enemy. What did, what, what did they do? Ye pull off the robe with the garment from them that pass by securely. Uh -huh. As men averse from war. As men averse from war. We wait, we lay in wait to rob a, a brother coming from work. That's what we do right there. Now, give me Romans 5. So now, what we just read is we've become enemies to ourselves. Take a while, guess who Christ was, what enemy Christ was telling you to love, brothers and sisters? The enemy of your own people that you got a problem with. Give me that. Romans 5 and 8. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 8. But God commendeth his love towards us uh -huh. in that while we were yet sinners. While we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. Okay. So while we were yet sinners, Christ died so we could have a chance at repentance back to the Father. Back into the sheepfold. Okay. Read. Much more than being now justified by his blood. Much more than being now justified by Christ's blood being shed. We shall be saved from wrath through him. That's how we get saved by what? Christ dying on the cross and we repenting. And when Christ come back, then we'll be saved. Okay, read. For if when we were enemies. Uh-oh. For if when we were enemies, who was we an enemy to? God. That's who we were an enemy to. If for if when we were enemies, when else were we, we, when were we enemies? When we were sinners, like it says in verse 8. Read. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. We were reconciled. So you don't have to be an enemy to God no more. We don't have to be an enemy to our brother no more. Read. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Y'all see that? Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his his life. Now, go back. We should have a better understanding now of when Christ said, love your enemies. Who was Christ talking about? He was talking about the enemies of your own people that you got a problem with. Now, go back to Matthew 5, 44. The book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. But I say unto you, uh -huh. love your Matter enemies. Matter of fact, start at 43. 
Verse 43, ye have heard that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Uh-huh. But I say unto you. But Christ says unto you. Love your enemies. Love those brothers and sisters you got a problem with too. Like in this organization, we got a lot of enemies. But guess what we got to do? We got to pray for them that despitefully use us. We got to pray for them that mean us no good. We got to pray that spirit off of uh, uh, brothers and sisters. Some brothers and sisters go to SPLC, the BBC, say we're a cult, we're a hate group, we're this, we're that. You understand? God says, we got to pray for you. We got to pray you get that traitor spirit off of you. Read it again. But 44. I say unto you, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. We're going to send a blessings for you. Do good to them that hate you. We're going to do good to you, even though you hate our guts. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. We're going to pray for you that despitefully use us and persecute us. Read. That ye may be the children of your father. Now we're going to get a blessing. By us doing that, we're going to get the blessing. You got malice in your heart for us, but we praying for you and doing what Christ said to do, we're going to get the blessing. That's showing us that we're the children of God. You the children of Bilal. Read. That you may be the children of your father which is in heaven. Read. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. Uh -huh. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Read. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? If we only love the brothers and sisters in this organization, what reward do we have? We ain't got no reward. Read. Do not even the publicans the same? That's what the publicans do. Read. And if ye you salute your brethren only, if we only salute those in this body, what do you more than others? Uh huh. Do not even the publicans That's so? That's what the publicans do. Read. Be ye, be ye therefore perfect. Christ said, be ye perfect. Even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So, brothers and sisters, that's 15 minutes with the captains. I pray you learn something. Now you know that the Christian mindset of love your enemies is not talking about the other nation that had your black behinds in slavery, hard bondage. And with that, I'm Captain Amaziah. Obviously, I fiend. And we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. <laughs>